Aloha ladies and gentlemen. Once again, this is in Bike Park, uh, Bike Park Quiz, Kama'a. Mika Eli Kama'a, Aloha Park Quiz, and Michelangelo. This is called Kika Tips, ladies and gentlemen. And I'd like to continue. This is our um, Kika Tips embedded number three for today. Today is, um, I believe, today is Friday. So, moving on, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as the Poemo Olelo goes, the story goes. Um, when I when I, I learned my skills my skill set from um, the 19th, early 70s and then I took lessons and I did uh, you know pay money for it you know and uh, my wife at the time didn't realize didn't understand how come how can you keep taking lessons from all of these different people you know paying all of this money even I didn't know I took from so many people all different styles and the reason why I'm telling you this. It's because in Hawaii, ladies and gentlemen, I, I, all, all of you guitar players, it's important to be versatile. Yes, you play slacky, you play reggae, you play jazz, blues, classical, country, bluegrass, you know, play funk. I, I mean, all the different styles to play because this is Hawaii name. This, this is what we are. We are um, a melting pot of so many different wonderful people from all over the world and then when people from all over the world come here so when they come here from all over the world you know they want to hear the Hawaiian music right and so when we go to different places and you know we have to play all the different styles of music you know you, over here there's jazz um, back in the 70s jazz was very little squishy people didn't really like jazz but what happened is um, West Montgomery he, um, he came over here um, he was came over here and you know even though he passed away he, um, he started the jazz movement well anyway I'd like to move on to um, the Hawaiian music I uh, because of my talent you know I'm teaching the guitar right at um, I got a student coming in his name is Andre Pucker call him Pucks he comes in for lessons and then uh, come to find out he's relative to uh, the the wonderful Makaha sons, Jerome and uh, Co um, Johnny Coco. Uh, Andre Puckert and his father, I got to meet his wonderful father, his wife. Uh, Andre Puckert came in and he told me that um, he's doing a recording of his song. You know, and then uh, I, he did, he recorded his song. And then the, and he said, he, um, the, what, what, what's the name of that, the business that sends people around the world? Hawaii Convention Bureau. Um, they were in contact and then the Fox said let's put a group together and then let's go, go um, tour Asia, uh, Asia. And so we did. We put a group together, Andre Puckett, we put a group together and we did go touring. Now, by virtue of that, ladies and gentlemen, I got to meet um, Boogs. Jerome Coco, he, he, he came to listen to us when we were performing at Stingaray Lounge over at the airport. And that's when Boogs, Jerome taught me, you know, the standard tuning, drop D. He taught me that, standard tuning, drop D. Thank you, Boogs. Um, Mooney, was the, uh, Mooney was part of the group too at the time. Mooney and uh, Johnny. Um, Johnny is a wonderful person. I got to meet him. Um, uh, through Puck's, because Puck's friends were, is, is uh, Kunani, Kiawe. The Kiawe family is the Ali'i. They, they come from the Ali family from the Big Island. Kiawe is Ali. Uh, uh, basically, uh, Kun, Kunani, he, he taught me, me a lot of things about Hawaii name. And uh, I'm, I'm still using it today. Um, things that I thank you for. Pooj, we call him Pooj. Also, his good friend is Johnny Coco. So, um, Johnny Coco is a bass player for the Maka Sons and the relative to Bucks. And so one day, Johnny picked me up and Pooj and we went around the island driving around. And uh, what I learned from Johnny is uh, he's very, very nice and he's very caring. When we stopped at the blowhole, right? And I said, oh, I want to go out and check it out. Then he told me, Mike, 
be very careful now. And he was serious about that. He wanted me to read. be very care careful. Um, Johnny Coco, man. I really appreciate Johnny. He was very encouraging to me. And uh, they even went to watch us uh, perform, you know, in, in Chinatown. You know, and uh, he, he gave me an advice regarding uh, how to perform, you know, how to get there, how to get to the top, yeah. John, Johnny Coco. You know, I, I got to meet Mooney, but it's a pri privilege to meet the Makaha Sons of D.E. Howe. And um, um, I went to Johnny's house one time. He's living at, um, in Maili. And uh, Hoon's family was living in uh, Nanakuli. Anyway, I went to, over to the house, and the first time in my life, ladies and gentlemen, I go inside there, and uh, Johnny said, you want something to drink? I said, yeah, please. So I sit down, he comes out with two cans, two, now instead of one, most people come out with one, right? He comes out with two cans, and I said, oh, wow, that's nice. You're the first one that ever did that. And I realized because um, the, their ohane is part with Brother Is. And then I, I did call Brother Is, because um, uh, Angela and I, we, we taught at the guitar over at uh, IA High School. Okay, so we started at IA High School, we're gonna have a, um, a, a guitar competition. So I called Brother Is. The phone rings. Pick up the phone. Brother Is, hey, Brother Is, can you can you please be a judge for us at the IA High School? And then so he's so very nice. And he said, I'm sorry, but um, I got to take care of my family. And then, you know, he's talking about his children. So I just I said, thank you, Brother Is. You love your, your, your you love your children so much. I learned about I learned from you about that. Thank you, Brother Is. I love you, my brother. Who? So I got to talk to Brother Is. I got to meet him. Um, and the, why am I telling you this, ladies and gentlemen? Because here in Hawaii, the, the, it's the, the people of Hawaii that is aloha. And it's the people of Hawaii is Ho'okipa, the artifact of hospitality. The people of Hawaii is Kinaoli, flawless excellence. Local Maikai is having inner healing. The people of Hawaii gives a is, is a, it gives us kukua, you know, kukua, aloha, and um, kulia ikanuku, kulia ikanuku, you, you strive for the top. When I went to the Yolani Palace, and then I, I toured the room, right, and then I, I on, on, on one of the blankets, I, I saw this kulia ikanuku. So I said, what, what does that mean? It's just, it says strive to the top. That was Queen Lili Okalani's um, blanket. She, she, she had that in great. Um, also because of the people of Hawaii, we can Ayana Pono have a good food. And then because of the people of Hawaii who lives in the different places, we can travel around the island and we can enjoy Ayana Pono. Uh, Ayana uh, Pono is to, to eat good food uh, from all over the world island. And Aina Nani Maolela to, to enjoy the the beautiful places of Hawaii. And I learned all of this from uh, Kaleno, Kaleno, Kale, Kale Hulani Isaacs. Forgive me you know, um, about the name, Kale, Kale Hulani Isaacs. Aina uh, Nani Maolela, Kapuli Akahaku, used to pray to God. The missionaries came over here, and um, as a result of that, thank God, then uh, they gave up the sacrifices after Christianity came in. And uh, everybody, that's where the churches in the whole Hawaiian town occurred, right? In different churches, uh, Christian churches. Uh, th this was even, uh, the Christian church came before the, the Catholic church. And after that, thank God for the Catholic church. St. Peter, St. Paul's church, the St. Augustine church, St. Anne's church. Thank God for that. But before that, there was the uh, Pentecostal churches that, that came in. Uh, the people from the Nui boats came in from the mainland, and, and uh, uh, they, uh, they they taught the Ali over here uh, about God, and they the Ali accepted God, and they, they themselves became Christians. And as a result, they did away with the uh, they did away with the uh, uh, sacrifices. Now, um, Kapuli Akahaku and Napoli Akahaku is a many the many. Um, prayers. Um, I, my, 
my sister, she met Mark Judy, who came in from Washington State, and he was a, a seasoned carpenter, and he came over here because he wanted to enjoy the, the Hawaii, like everybody else does. But one day, Mark was hitchhiking, and uh, lo and behold, um, Albert Judd picked him up. Now, Albert Judd is the relative to Jared Judd. Jared Judd lived at the Iolani Palace, and he, he was the a mentor for the King Kamehameha and for, you know, for the Ali over there. Uh, he, he was a part of, he helped the, the Ali. And we're talking about um, Queen Kapiolani, Queen Likiliti, you know, um, King Kamehameha, King Lunalilo, all of these people, you know, even the, uh, he helped them when, the, when there was a concern with it. Well, with the an annexation of the islands, you know, when, when they went out, when they had that, they wanted to take over the island again. They did it against the queen, and the queen was in, Queen Lili Okalani was uh, in prison in the Yolani Palace. So, um, Jerry Judd, um, he loved the, the Aina, and he used to, from, because of Mark, knowing him, Mark stayed at what is called Palai over at the uh, Haikili Highway. Uh, going towards uh, right past um, Waiholi, going towards um, Ko Kolo. It's a, it's a plantage that the Ali gave the Judd family. Even in uh, Nuwano, where there's a um, missionary row, the Judd family have a Judd street over there. Um, that's all from the Ali, because it's how the Ali loved the Judd family. The Judd family taught them. So um, I used to work at Palagi, and I met Juddy to Mark, but Mark married my sister. And then I got to meet um, Juddy. I, uh, I started working at Palai, and then uh, um, basically it's acreage is given to the, the Judd family. Um, and I started cleaning the place, cleaning the streams, and learning about the the graves that were over there and, and this and that. Across the street, there's a graveyard as well. But anyway, from Judd, um, Albert Judd, he told me to put me more little about the story um, because I got to learn. I asked him questions. Great minds ask great questions. So I told him, how was it? Juddy in the big, you know, big, big, in the days, you know, Juddy was on in age already, right? So, so he told me the story. He said, when the Ali would would go to the the village, you know, on the horses, they would go in the village, and he said everybody had to prostrate themselves down and bow down, and um, you know, like the certain foods um, that was built, you know, the makainana and the lavaya, the, the fishermen and the farmers, they would prepare. Buy, they would plant food for the Ali and the, the fish for the Ali, right? So when they come, they would give it to the Ali or they would, they would even travel over and give it from uh, o over the country into town to give, give the Ali the food. But anyway, when they went to the, the village, they would prostrate themselves down, you know, and then the people who didn't do that, they were disobedient and people who would steal the, the from them the Ali, the food, you know, the food and the fishing, and then they're not supposed to. They would be punished. I said, okay, uh, how would they be punished? This was a long time ago before the missionaries came, right? Um, he said, oh, they would be sacrificed at the hell. Uh, and they would be put against a uh, coconut tree and they would be strangled. And then he told me the story. He said, um, if they were designated to, to be sacrificed and they walked to the place with dignity that they, they would be honored but if they had to be dragged to the place and some of them had to be dragged of course then that they would bring a dishonor to the ohana so he told me the story about that i said oh that's very interesting well thank god then they don't sacrifices now into the volcano and and all that you know sacrifices were for for, for good food for fishing for things like that so i told him uh, you know, right now we have CNN, we have the news. How did how did they know about what to do when they had the storms and all of this? He said, well, anytime there was a storm, you know, you would look, you would see the seagulls coming in from the from the ocean, and then they, they would know that there was a storm coming. And also, he said, you know, the different species of plant. Um, by looking at the species of plant, you know how it was, the color of the, the leaves. They would know that um, they had at the time they had. The lot, you know, plums. He said there would be bushels of plums. Um, 
and uh, they, they had guava, and they also had what is called American guava, the smaller guava. And they would know when that was was uh, was being ripened as, as well as the lily koi um, and the vegetables, and the, you know, of course the the mountain apple was more more contemporary, right? But at the time there was the poi, the lohe, you know, the poi, and uh, yeah, the, you know, the pigs, you know, and the, and the ducks and the chickens, you know, and you know, certain things in the village they would they would uh, get together and go to the go to the the beach area over there, and then they do it. Uh, bring with them, the, they call it the hukilau, they would, the whole community would gather and bring in the fishes. And I said, where was this? And then he mentioned it, uh, over at the Haula site. They did Haula, and you know, all of that area is over there, because there's a lot of parks. So I learned this from, uh, from Jari, and he told me about the Swansea Beach. Uh, there's a Swansea Beach Park, and he told me um, before, over there, there was a, uh, a building, it, it was a sugar building, or pineapple, pineapple build building. It was over there, and it's, the remnants are still there. And they said the, the one of the owner's sons got killed in the fire from there. Uh, and, and as I go past over there, going towards um, Kola, it, it's on the side of the remnants of that, um, that, that factory. You know, there's so much things to learn. It's, um, and I thank God for Jody. Jody passed away, but. Um, his family well, was living up there, and um, Jerry Judd used to take care of the the, the graves in the Ilani Palace. Um, God knows if it's still there or where it is now. But uh, you know the secrets that uh, Judy shared with me. You know, I just been holding on to it for all these years and thanking God for knowing Judy. And because of him, um, my sister lived over there. Um, and my and her husband and I got to I got to be in Palai and enjoy the I don't know being over there that's when I started playing the key all of key you know um, G tuning there's G tuning the Wahini tuning and uh, B flat donuts for, for good dining I learned that from Ledward. and yeah, that that's a that's, that's another tuning very interesting well m moving on uh, this is a poem Olelo. Um, I'm getting closer to the to the lesson. Okay, so basically now, the reason why I'm telling you all this is this: uh, Angelo and I we're we're from the Guitar Institute of Hawaii. We've been doing this for over 40 years now. Uh, we started teaching guitar tips, and the reason why is the, the main the reason why is to promote the art of guitar performance here in the island. So as you can see, the art of guitar performance here in the island is being promoted and with guitar virtuosos. All, all of your best guitar players uh, and the musicians and the singing. That's basically what I, I wanted to do and it's, and it's done. And that's, that's because when I went to the mainland then I got to meet all the movie stars. I got, oh, um, you know, just walking on the street, Charles Bronson. I, I was living on Bronson Avenue. I didn't know it was his family place. And he changed his name because of the, the location. His name wasn't, his last name wasn't Bronson. In, Initially, Charles Bronson passed away too. But uh, we, uh, I lived on Bronson Avenue. Uh, Pat Hicks and the, the people there got me situated with somebody else. Um, well, anyway, let's move on to the lesson, okay, for today. Uh, uh, this is applied music theory. Uh, this is for the intermediate and advanced, um, the inter uh, beginning, intermediate, and advanced. But basically, it's more for the intermediate, okay? So the word is. Um, Okay, the word is tertian harmony. Tertian harmony basically is base three. Okay, tertian harmony is one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, and thirteen. 
Okay. Um, tertian harmony, ladies and gentlemen. Basically, when you have one one note, then you have, it's called single string technique. You have two notes. It's called these are called dyads. For the dyads, you have uh, first of all for the one from here and here. That's called your perfect primer. There's a perfect eight. It's also called an octave. For the dyad, you have major and minor seconds. And then you have one, two, three, right? So the, we have the dyads, major, minor seconds. Okay, we're, um, so we, we're dealing with the dyads, two notes. And then we have three notes. When you have the three notes like this, then this is called a triad. And then we have what is called four notes. So we have four-part four note hum, four part harmony, it's called four-part harmony, four-part harmony, that's a vernacular. And then we have, when you, when you go to five-part harmony, then we have the ninths, and then we have six-part harmony, which is the elevens, and then we have seven-part harmony, which is the thirteens. Now if you look at the C scale, E, F, G, A, B, C. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's basically from one to seven is this completion of the scale. Of one and eight is octave. Okay, so uh, this is the the C scale. It is it's, it, the scale moves al al alphabetically, and this is real. This is the C scale. Okay, so now when we have the C, okay, then uh, for the three notes in here. The, the triads, it's either going to be one, three, five, one flat third, five. The one, three, five is major, capital M. The one flat three, five is minor. Okay, so one, three, five, right? So there's C, E, G, C, E, G. And then we have the seven. So then we have C major seven is C, E, G, C, E, G, B. So C major seven, C, E, E G B, okay, and then when when it's a B flat, and then it's not the C major seven, it's a C dominant seven, C E G B, okay. So now we're moving on to the ninth. We add the D in there, then we have we have a C ninth. Okay, you add in the eleven, and then you have a. You add in the, so the D is the ninth. The eleven is the fourth is the eleven, yeah. So that's an F. You add the F in there, then you have a C11. Okay, you add the, 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 the 13 is the 6 is the 13. That's, you add the A in there, then you have a C, the major 13. This is applied music theory, tertian harmony. Okay, so um, I'm just uh, sharing this because the, we, we, we're dealing, what we're dealing with right here is called chords. Uh, that's how we, we get chords from all the different keys. But this is based on your fingerboard. Your fingerboard um, is your guitar.